taking energy out of our food is going to be the electron transfer chain. So what's going to happen? We're going to have NADH coming in. Remember how with the first step of glycolysis, we ripped off two NADHs? We're going to have this feeding in here. We're going to have FADH feeding in. This is going to be from our other step right here with the Krebs cycle. We were having ripping off NADHs and FADHs. All of these steps, whether we we're dealing with glycolysis, whether we're doing pruritic oxidation, whether we're doing with uh, the Krebs cycle, we produce this NADHs and FADHs. Some steps, like glycolysis and pruritic oxidation, just produce NADH, or other steps produce both, but they're storing energy in the form of this NADH and FADH. What's going to happen is we're going to take the electrons and we're going to go through these complexes. What they're going to do is they're going to pump protons from here, the space in the mitochondria outside of the inner membrane space, we're going to pump that into the inner membrane space. So this is going to become very acidic. Lots and lots of acid particles here. But what's going to happen is we're going to pump in four protons uh, right here. This second step, not going to pump any protons in here. The third step, we're going to pump in an additional four protons. And this last step, complex four, we're going to pump in an additional two more protons. All of this is storing lots and lots of energy in this area. This ATP synthase, we're going to allow four protons out because they really want to get out of here because we would force them all in here. But we're going to make a deal. All right, if we let you out, if we let four of you guys out, you're going to have to make one ATP. So that's how we store most of the energy from our sugar molecule in the form of ATP is through this electron transparent chain. And so this is what it's showing for one molecule of NADH, one molecule of FADH, right? Um, now, the thing is, we're doing more than just one molecule. So let's talk a about what it would look like with later. all the molecules of NADH. So we got six NADHs per glucose molecule and two FADHs per glucose molecule. So let's see how this thing looks like with them involved. When we factor in that we got six NADHs, two FADHs, and those, once again, those are all coming from pyruvate oxidation and the Krebs cycle, we walk away with a different understanding here. What's going to happen is this first complex is going to pump out 24 hydrogen, right? Of the $34.80 worth of energy still left in glucose, of the $100 worth of energy that was in the form of glucose, we're only putting $10.56 of it with this first complex. Of the $20.94, it goes to the second complex, the CoQ. This is why they say for the elderly, you take CoQ10, replacing this enzyme, by the way. So then both NADH and FADH are going to go through complex 3. And so what's going to happen is for each molecule of FADH, each molecule of NADH, right, we're pumping out four protons right here. So we're pumping out a total of 32 protons, or those H+, plus, right, those acid particles. That's going to be like $14.08 worth of uh, hydrogen. And then we pump out only two per molecule of FADH and two per molecule of NADH. So that's going to be an additional $7.04 worth of energy that we pumped out. So we stored $31.68 worth of energy from glucose in the form of this acid particles. Well, we don't get to use all that. Remember, we got to make it worth its while for these acid particles to leave. If it's just, it costs you so much money, so much energy to go from here to there that uh, you didn't get to waste any energy, it's not going to want to do it. Imagine going to work and let's just say for the sake of argument, you earn $160 at work, but it costs you $160 in gas to get there. You're going to be like, forget that. I'm going to stay at home. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. You spend all that time and energy and effort going to from work if you're no better off. Same idea here with the uh, hydrogen, right? It's not going to leave if it doesn't get to waste some energy. So what we do is we force this ADP into becoming ATP. We're actually able to create about 18 ADP right here. And so we're only storing about $25.38 worth of energy. So the overall efficiency breaking down sugar aerobically with that oxygen is only about 43%. Most of that is actually coming right here in this electron transport chain. 
And so, very, very powerful tool that we have here. Now, why does this matter? Why do we care about this? Well, a couple of questions I could have. Let's say that you're taking a medicine and it's putting a hole in this membrane right here. And so what's happening is now this H plus is able to leak out without making ATP. What would that do? Well, the answer is going to be, number one, it's going to produce a lot of heat. Number two, you're going to actually lose weight. Why? Because what's going to happen is, let's say I lose 36 H plus over here. Well, guess what? I'm not going to be able to produce, have 36 H plus going through here. And as a result, my ATP production is going to be cut in half. And so we'll say roughly 12 84 will probably be close enough. And so what's going to happen? Well, if I want more ATP to run a reaction, I'm going to have to break down a lot more sugar molecules. This was actually used as a weight loss drug of this exact situation here. Another thing, I already kind of mentioned it. As you get older, you generally don't produce as much CoQ10. So you're going to have trouble breaking down your food for energy. So you're going to be very tired and you may have some problems with weight gain. Right? Why? Because if I can't break down my food, it, it just gets stored in my body. So I get fat. And so this also explains why we actually produce some water right here. So that's going to have a minor role kind of for dehydration. So one of the things is this electron transport chain. We don't just use it for carbs. We use it for protein and fat. And so any sort of genetic disorder, mitochondrial disorder, is going to affect uh, fat, protein, and carb metabolism because we're using the same chain these proton pumps, I don't know if these proton pumps are the same that we use for our stomach acid, but we do have proton pumps in our stomach. So let's say that you're taking a medication uh, to, because you're having ulcers, so pantoprazole. And so what pantoprazole does is it shuts down the protein pump. So we're having trouble pumping proton, pumping acid particles from our blood in to our stomach. And so our stomach doesn't get as acidic. Well, I sure hope that pantoprazole can tell the difference between the proton pumps in your stomach and these proton pumps over here. So maybe a side effect of pantoprazole would be sluggishness. Why? Because you cannot move the electrons from NADH and FNDH because the pump doesn't work. Because you've gummed it up because you're taking the pantoprazole or some sort of proton pump in here. All right, that concludes today's episode. If you liked what you heard, be sure to click the subscribe and like button down below. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or if there's any particular topic you'd like me to create a video on, let me know in the comments down below. All right, well, I look forward to seeing you on my next podcast.